Hello, my name is David. I'm a summer intern for GT Youth, and I just want to talk about a story that I like to listen to. It's about how Joshua took the Israelites and made them go into a different land, helped them move out of slavery. And it's the people that rebel, that, that's what the story is called. So there's this verse, I like to read it a lot. Whole community went, began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. What they're protesting about is trying to get away from this land because they hear that these people are super tall, they're gonna destroy them, they're gonna be rude, they don't they don't want them to come into the promised land because the people that were spies didn't want to go. So if only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they don't want to go to this promised land even though God had had it for them. And even though God had a plan for them, they still didn't want to do it. So whenever God has a plan for you, you got to do it. And they complained, why is the Lord taking us into this country only to have us die in battle? These people are super tall, they're super mean, they're super vicious from what the spies say. But the spies are wrong because this is a promised land God has sent for them and God never will lie about this promised land. He had told Joshua that this land is for these people. Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? They, didn't, they still don't want to go to this promised land and yet here is Joshua. Then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephna, tore their clothing. They said to the people of Israel, the land we traveled though through and explored is wonderful land. These people are telling them Joshua and Caleb are telling them it's wrong, we're sorry, this land is the promised land, it's a wonderful land. Because whenever they had, whenever Joshua and Aaron told them, it's like we're crickets to these people. And the people there just started freaking out. They didn't know what to do and they started like cursing out God. They didn't want to go there. They're, they didn't want to go into a promised land just to die. They just thought, why didn't God just kill us in the wilderness then? It didn't make sense to them. So then Joshua and Caleb announced that they were wrong. And they said, this land is wonderful. This land, this land is beautiful. There's no tall men. They're all very welcoming and kind. They just don't want them to go longer distance. So if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into the land and give it to us. It is rich land flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey, food, everything that you want. I'll read more. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Stoning means whenever they throw stones at people and it's not really good in a certain way. It's not really a good thing. The glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe, believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them, I will disown them and destroy them with a plague. Then I will make you into a national nation greater and mightier than they are. So whatever God wants you to do something, it's best that you do it because this might be your only chance to actually do it. So next time God has a plan for you, sometimes the Holy Spirit will talk through you and telling you that God does have a plan for you because every step of your life, He's there. Even if you don't see Him or feel Him or even be there with Him, He just, or you may think that you're not there with Him. He's still there with you. Even though you may think He's not, He's still there. So. If you ever, if you have any plans or things, 
and then God tells you to do something, you might want to cancel them. Because whenever God has something for you, you're going to want to do them soon. Because you, that might be your only chance. Sometimes God has plans and you don't even know them. And then whenever you think something inside your head, like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should go say sorry. That's God telling you what you did was wrong. So next time you do something and God tells you not to do it, or if you do something and God tells you to do it, just be grateful. Not whenever you not do it, but whenever you don't do something, just ask for forgiveness. These people didn't ask for forgiveness and they got swallowed up into the earth. So next time you do something, just remember that God is there. And whenever you do something wrong, just ask for forgiveness because God loves you in every way possible. But if you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive. All right, thank you guys.